Alright. Happy Monday, everyone. Let's get that full screen. We'll go over to the uh, to the game here in a sec. I want to talk about Dominaria real quick, because it came uh, it didn't come out yet. The pre-release happened last week. And I got to go to it in Seattle with some friends, and it was a lot of fun. It is a really, really fun set. Um, I think we're, if you're at all interested in playing Paper Magic, it's, it's legit. Um, it's very refreshing from uh, Ixalan. It, uh, it just, it feels like a good core set, you know? It doesn't feel like you have to, like, you know, I have to go dinosaurs, and if I don't get the dinosaur cards, uh, my deck isn't going to work very well, or I'm not going to enjoy my deck, or I'm going to get some pirates and some <coughs> explore cards or something. It doesn't really do anything like interesting. It's just kind of like play whatever. Dominaria is great, um, and I wanted to showcase some of my cards that uh, I, I think we can probably look forward to some of them uh, being really good in Puzzle Quest. Some of them are exist, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, first things, so you get two, um, promos. One guaranteed legend, because this set's all about legends, and a guaranteed rare. The legend might be a rare... So, my first one that I opened was Joda. I know they don't show up very well, but deal with it. Um, and I actually got two of him. Aha! Surprise! Uh, this is the, you can see the, the promo gold... I like this is the promo gold one. Let's see. Um, I didn't end up playing with them. I almost tried to make him work. I ended up going red white, and I was like, uh, he's you know he's a four three flyer. But I decided uh, didn't didn't play him. He seems cool, but I I just don't think he's very good in uh, uh, an environment like that. The other one I got, which I also did not play with in the the event. But I went home and built a couple decks, and my fiance and I bashed them onto each other. And it was really fun was Volvrotha. This thing's nuts. So good. I'm sorry, again, you can't really see the image, but uh, it's going to be really cool. I think if they implement this into um, Puzzle Quest, it's going to be really similar to God Pharaoh's Gift. So that'll be fun. I got Yargle. I got a Yargle. Everyone likes Yargle. Didn't play with him, but he's fun. Um, I got a couple of the, uh, anyway, a couple of the, uh, sagas. I didn't get to, I didn't play this one. I haven't played this one. It seems iffy. This one's really cool, um, because it makes a big old demon, and it's really fun to get, after it does its thing, getting its demon, you bring it back with, uh, Muldrotha, and start doing it all over again. Muldrotha pulls back permanent, so... Get your demon, while Dorothy goes, hey, let's get another demon in a couple of turns. Um, but what did push me into my red-white deck was I opened a Lyra. This is, if you're familiar with the card, Baneslayer Angel, this is like Baneslayer Angel's little sister. It has Flying, First Strike, and Life Link, and it's a 5-5 five, five for 5. It seems solid. Other angels you control get plus 1, plus 1. Unfortunately, this level of card is ripe for removal, and I think I maybe launched an attack with her once. I may not have lived to deal damage, but sweet! I like it. Um, so that's kind of what pushed me in the white direction. Red, <coughs> excuse me, um, not only had a lot of my good removal, had a lot of pretty good creatures. Had kind of like a goblin synergy going on, but I got two of this guy, Valduk. And essentially, he wants to have equipment and auras attached to him now. Which is cool, because I got some spicy equipment. Um, I got something called Black Blade Reforge. This thing makes him bigger for each land I control, and it's cheaper to equip to legendaries. Um, I got this thing, which is just... This is gonna do some really bust of stuff. Helm of the Host. It copies the creature it's enchanted to, and the copy stays around, and if it's enchanted to a legendary, the copies are no longer legendary, so you can just... Like, if I put that on the angel, it would have been really cool. Um, last thing I want to talk about, it's not the most exciting, is... It's over here. The Jousting Lands. It's just a very solid card. It makes your creatures hit really hard. It makes them a big deal. Now, why I want to talk about this one 
is... Check this out. Ready? Ready? Boop! Oh, wait. I gotta do the other thing now. No. Oh. Come on. Sorry. No. No. Help. I'm being drowned in windows. There we go. Ooh, that was embarrassing. Is right now in the vault in Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest. It may not show up because I already bought them. Um, there is this spectacular deal for... It's probably in my inbox still. <gasps> Look who's here! Be the first to own Karn. Uh, so you get five exclusive Dominaria cards, 5,000 runes, which isn't much, but he's a colorless planeswalker, meaning you can play any combination of colors you want. Oh, do we get this now? Cool! And we got the Lanwar Elves. Cool. So, Karn is so good. Well, he takes a lot to uh, power up, and as you can see, I kind of used all my crystals. Um... Let's look at that Land War Elves. Oh, I also got... I, I opened this the other day. I kind of don't know what to do with it. I wish it hit players as well. It's a, it, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Here we go. Dominaria. They've said this symbol doesn't mean anything. It, it sort of looks like a card called uh, some sort of Power Stone. Something Power Stone. This also sort of looks like Karn... Eh, I don't know. I, I figured this will become more... The, the shape will be kind of more relevant as the game goes on. Aptly. Let's look at Llanowar Elves. Activate 2. Convert 3 gems to green. Okay, cool. It's a 2-2 two, two for 10. It's not... Not bad. You know, you, you want your mana dorks cheap, and this is like... You can maybe get this out on turn 1... More likely it's going to come out on turn two, which means you're not going to do anything until turn three. Man. But when you reinforce him, he just converts more gems to green. So he's pretty cool. Um, yeah, this is just a staple in Paper Magic. This thing is so good. Um, it, in Paper Magic, it could probably honestly, eh, maybe a little weak to be a rare, but it's just, it's so good. It just, you know, on turn two, you can make a, you can cast a three drop. Great. Uh, this is just ramp incarnate. I never realized that the nose was pierced. Hmm. Um, anyway, let's look at the rest of Karn's cards. So there's Jousting Lance. It does exactly the same thing. It costs different, but it's exactly what the paper card does. So I like it when they do that. Um, uh, we'll get to Guild of Lotus. Howling Golem. I like the paper card of this a lot. I, I don't know how I feel about this thing. Um, if you were, you know, it might be good in, like, Karn, which wants to draw cards because he, uh, burns through his deck really fast. Um, or any deck where you're just casting cards like crazy. Um, it's okay. It's fine. Uh... I haven't played with this yet. I don't really like the paper card. Um, it's, it, the paper one is six to activate and it costs one, so it just sits on your board just like, you know, just taunting your opponent to remove it. You know. It's, it's so-so. I guess we can scroll like this. Navigator's Compass, when it enters the battlefield, you gain two life. The beginning of turn, one of your colored mana bonuses is increased by one chosen randomly until end of turn. It's very strange. I don't know. I haven't played with it. Oh, maybe it's a little map of Dominaria in there. Uh, one thing I like about Puzzle Quest is they put like high res images in, so you can really look at it as opposed to the paper ones that are, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're constrained to about, what is that, like two by one and a half inches. So you really get to get in there and look at all the cool details and stuff like, you know, look at the detail on the tablecloth. That's cool. I mean, they put so much work into these illustrations, and for us to just really look at it, it's just like, oh, it's a lance on like a purple tablecloth. Neat. But to really look at it, Someone worked really hard on this. It's cool. We can see it. I rest. Anyway, Gilded Lotus. This thing... The, so, Karn, right now, the bundle is 20 bucks, which I think is totally reasonable. Um, you get a Planeswalker, you get 
five Dominaria cards, and you get this really good rare. Um, while the support is on the board, each of your mana bonuses are increased by two. Wait, run that by me again? Every mana bonus is increased by two. It's so good. It's extremely good. If you put... This is so good in Karn. It just means when you match a red, like three red, you're getting 15 red mana. Yeah, let that sink in. 15? 14. 14. Oh, maybe it's not as good as that. It's nuts. It's so good. It has two shields, but it's fine. It's really easy to cast. Um, let's look at Karn. Uh, I have some other things planned for today, but let's look at Karn. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I forgot to get some water. I'm going to take a pause here and get some water real quick before we play a game. Here's Karn. I only have him at level 16 because I've been dumping all my runes into him. Um, let's look at his abilities. Thran Legacy. Pick one of the next two cards in your library, fetch that card, and exile the other. If it was a colorless card, your mana bonuses are increased by one. His mana bonuses are pretty bad, as you can see. Um, that's why they give you the Gilded Lotus, but I tend not to need it. I just kind of have my deck stuff with cheap stuff, and uh, you know, I just slam this until I don't need to anymore. That said, it is still pretty good card draw, so you at least get to pick which card you want. Tolarian Legacy. Pick one of the next... Pick one of the first two cards from your exile and gain four mana. Interestingly, cycled cards go to exile. I haven't really played with that much yet. It seems like something you could totally do, but I wanted to build a non-cycling Planeswalker. There's, there's, cycling is kind of nuts. It's, it's all over the place. Um, I don't have... Oh, I do have this unlocked yet. I don't know how big or what this does. Um, I'd like to get there. Usually, I've only been playing super easy fights, so um, I haven't gotten to the Argentum Legacy. How much does it cost? Twelve. That shouldn't be hard to do. Um, so, initially I built a deck that was all the colors, because I thought it just sounded cool, and it was kind of built towards um, stealing stuff out of your opponent's deck using, like, Unesh and uh, that red and blue card that deals damage to your opponent for the first spell they cast, and then it flips and blah, blah, blah. It was okay. Um... I really like the idea of stealing stuff out of my opponent's deck, but there's two problems. Uh, one, your the cards you steal are only as good as your opponent's deck, and since I'm playing a low-level Planeswalker, you'd steal, like, a vanilla 2-2, two -two, and you're like, that wasn't worth it. Throw it away, throw it away. Um, and the other thing is, is it kind of throws off the synergy of your own deck. You know, what are you going to do with that 2-2 two -two vanilla? Probably nothing. Just throw it away. You just wait to spell. Um, so I, I finally just kind of came around to an all-colorless deck. So this way, when you use this ability, it doesn't miss. Um, and it's just got some of my favorite colorless, you know, Conquerors, Galleon, Hangerback Walker, Meteorite. Um, so it's just, it's just kind of a solid deck. This is probably the weakest card in there, but it pulls something from Exile, and it gains its six mana, so... I haven't played with it much. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so I figure we'll give this a couple plays today. The other thing overcast because oh like it's like grace guys <laughs> i'm from seattle i see this a lot lol uh the other thing i wanted to do we have some spicy stuff we can do today there's another planeswalker in the vault oops that wasn't the right thing to do vault i figure we'll just play around with some of these new planeswalkers today um, I think I'm going to get Jace today, too. Even though I don't have the runes to power him up, I, I don't want to miss him. Who knows when we'll see him again. He seems really cool, too. Let's do this first. I think there's a bunch of dragons and a bunch of cool Ixalan mythics I would love to pick up, like one of these rare dinos. Tetsamok would make me so happy. Those who would Psycam or, uh, What's the other boy? One of the big dragons would be cool too. What do they not have? Um, what is his face? Isn't that 
EDH commander. Gishath, I think. He looks cool too. Also would love Azor. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff, so let's give this a spin. Let's see what we get. Yes, bees. Uh-huh. It's red. Sick! Deals. I wish there needs to be it. It deals eight damage to creatures without flying. Cool. Wow. And then if there are eight or more. Wow. 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 This one's so much better than the white one. <laughs> um. Cool. Cool. I like it. It's not going in my J stack today, but. It's cool. Alright. Now. Let's get Squinty Jace. Also, aka Sexy Jace, because he's showing his shoulder. I don't get it. He's, he's all squinty. He's like... Ugh. But he's cool. Uh, I think I'm a little shy on crafting. I checked this morning, I had about 2,000. Um, so we don't have quite enough to, uh, open anything. What do we get? I don't even know what his deck is. Any rares in there? Oh, Sleep Swallower. Yeah, I already have this guy. He's cool! Um... Let's look at his abilities. Wait. We got some more points right here. So every time you master one of the pre-constructed decks, you get a little bit more. So there's a thousand crystals. That'll uh, be useful for leveling up some of these planeswalkers. What do we have in this one? Nice. Um, but usually the master ones are so hard to unlock, so you need like mythics and stuff. The Ixalan ones were just stupid, because you had to have... Um, not Ixalan, I'm sorry, uh, Kaladesh. Because you need to have all these, like, exclusive rares, and it's like... Yeah, one of those moves. Um, alright, so, look, his abilities are really cool. That's why I think he looks like a lot of fun. Um, so he draws cards, and he discards a card. So we can make some shenanigans happen there. Blue Illusion Token, when this creature becomes a target of a spell, destroy it. So if we can figure out a way to give our creatures um, hexproof, I'm trying to think if there's anything in cards that I have. There's a Sphinx that I don't have that's in Battle for Zendikar, so we won't even worry about that. Um, and then this other one is Illusion Wizard Token with Activate 2 and Gain 5 Lord <coughs> Which is interesting with his first ability. Oh. Huh. It was something that made like illusions gain hexproof. It might be a later version of this one. I wish you could see like how, how much it takes to unlock. But um, let's put a few levels into them. If we get into level ten, I think that'd be fun. Look how cheap he is to level up. Let's try to get at least a second ability online. There we go. Fight and steal. Illusionist's Illusion. Uh, cool! Alright, look at his mana gains. He gets plus two, plus one, and plus one. I mean, that makes sense. Interesting, notice this. You can actually buff this with the, uh, I think the Gilded Lotus bumps that as well. I don't think anything else does, but maybe. Kaladin, or. Ixalan had a lot of, like, loyalty gain stuff going on, um, but it usually wasn't worth it. Some of it was. It was kind of cool. Alright, let's, let's build the deck for this guy. Um, Planeswalkers. So he wants to have evasive creatures that draw cards and discard cards. 
what I might do is I might... So I built this deck for... Jace 1. It's all about Sphinxes. And... Um, uh, drawing cards, discarding cards, doing stuff. It's fun! Unfortunately, Jace 1's mana gains and abilities are so lackluster. Like, this one's cool, but it's really expensive. This one's really cool, it's also really expensive. This is just awful. Compared to other abilities that just straight up kill a creature, this is so bad. Um, so where is... there he is. Squinty Jace. So this thing does look pretty cool. It's weird though, because like, they're just gonna cast the biggest stuff, their most important card. It, 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 I wish it did something different, like three random cards from their hand. I don't know, it's just me. So, I need to read his abilities one more time. Nanocon, end of the turn. If a creature you control dealt combat damage this turn, discard one card and draw two cards. Okay. We can make some shenanigans happen with that. <coughs> Pardon me. Probably won't be using this. A 2-2 two -two with a built-in downside is not great. This could be really, excuse me, really good. How do we break it? I think I have an idea. Oop, decks. Alright, we're gonna gut this deck. Edit. Goodbye. Seems to me like he wants to draw a lot of cards. Look what we have for rares. Sometimes that kind of just helps me figure out what I'm gonna do with the deck. Um, we're gonna ignore new perspectives, because I've already got that deck doing stuff. This card is awful. Oh? I have been wanting to build, like, just a really hard control deck, where I, like, they just can't gain mana. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in white that does this too, so I might wait for, I think his name's Teferi? He'll be up in Dominaria. He's a white blue planeswalker. Um, this card seems great. Kind of a one trick pony, but it does its job very well. Here's who I was looking for Kefnet. You draw two cards. This creature can't attack and can't block unless you have at least five cards in your hand. Cool! Ooh, you haven't played with this yet. Neat. Let's try that. This was what I was talking about. This steals stuff out of your opponent's hand. It also increases your hand size by one, which is very unique. Unfortunately, it's not a great card. <laughs> that means saboteur. That could be kind of neat. Uh, what does treasure map do? This is the really bad one, I think, right? Yeah. Don't even waste your time reading that. Um, what does this do? Yeah, hmm. I don't think this deck really wants to gain a bunch of mana. Stuff that like says when you draw a card, do lots of stuff. Alexa just scared the living piss out of me. Hold on one second. Alexa, stop. She just thought I wanted to listen to some country music. Never have I been so wrong. From your opponent. Let's try this. 
That seems fun. What is our deck looking like so far? Two creatures. Great! <laughs> um... This guy does stuff when he's in the graveyard. Ooh, if that's the strategy we're going on, just sort of like, uh... Blue Graveyard shenanigans, Glyph Keeper's really good, too. Alright, now how are we looking? Not bad. Good curve, 9, 10, 10, 15. That's totally doable. We're dumping our hand, we're screwing up our opponent's stuff. I think we need now... We need at least, um... Excuse me. Um, we need at least a little bit of ramp. Uh, and a great blue spell for ramping. And it's just a great spell all around. Any way you slice it, we'll slice. Water entity. Alright, alright. Oh, this is a great card. We'll put consign in. Bounce stuff back to their hand. Desert of the Wasteful. Did we already get... No, I, I meant to put in, um... River Rebuke. Because blue does not have a lot of ways to deal with supports. I think it's over here. And it's a great way to deal with them. Expensive! But great. Great and expensive. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we have that screwing up their hand. I'm tempted to put Sphinx's do a thing in here. If I played that card to death. What I really want is... We've got tons of card draw, so that's not really what we're looking for. Um, that's kind of removal, that's kind of removal. What I really need is, like, a way to gain mana. I need mana, and I would like some way to, like, screw up my opponent's stuff. I'm trying to think if there's anything like that. comes to mind. So, since we're going to be drawing tons of cards, I think I'm going to put um, Pyramid of the Pantheon. Yeah. 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 Oh, this works out good, too, because if I discard it, I like that. Let's give this a spin. It might be totally awful. It's built out of all rares. I feel kind of cheap about that sometimes. I've been playing this game so long, I have so many rares. Many of them I've never even, like, you know, done anything with. I feel kind of bad about. Just a little bit bad. Alright, so we're going to do something kind of ill-advisable. I'm going to run these up against, like, top-tier decks. <laughs> I want to see what happens. <laughs> I mean, we could play these in story mode against really weak decks, and that'll be boring, right? The the story mode weak decks are just, like, miserably weak. Um, it's like, you can beat them without batting an eyebrow. We're going to try this deck. This could be, like, the dumbest idea I've ever had. And I've had some dumb ideas. <gasps> oh, cool! It put me up against a... Uh, a uh, relatively similar level. That's great! Okay, cool. This should be interesting. Um, I'm gonna pause it and get a drink of water. Uh, but, uh, let's do a thing. Oh, goodness. Oh, heavens. Here we go. Alright, we're back. I have water. And that's appropriate, because we're playing a blue deck. If I play a red deck, I'm gonna have to light something on fire. If I play a black deck, I'll have to throw some mud at a skeleton. I don't know. Ooh, this looks great. 
Wait, what does this do? I said, what does this do? Thank you. That's not bad. That's one of these spells just like, it's kind of always good. In fact, it might be better to get it. Nah, we, w we want a creature out, I think. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do this. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Spicy. Yes, I would love to draw some cards. Kefnik can't attack unless you have... It's either five or more, or... Oh, man. Or six or more. Oh, that's a problem. Uh-oh. Oh, really? Well, that was a good turn for you. Look at this. He starts with, like, over double my hit points. Yes, we need that. Oh my god, yes. Right effing now. Yes, 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 yes. We're dead. We're so dead. <laughs> Well, that was fun. Failed experiment. Okay, how do I get the most mana this turn? I think I'm just looking at this blue. Yeah. Yeah, take four. Oh, we are losing real, real fast. Ah, but Kefnik can attack this turn. Fortunately, with this deck having so few hit points, we can hopefully uh, play a couple of games of it without it feeling like it's dragging on forever. Wow! Are we just dead? Well, that didn't go very well. <laughs> Let's just, uh, yeah. Oh, good. Three more hit points? Yes! Now we're top tier. This is fun. I haven't played weak. Um, it's interesting to play weak planeswalkers with powerful cards. <laughs> Like, uh, oh, this should be great. This should be really interesting. It's like the idea of a glass cannon, you know? It's like very powerful but easily destroyed. I love that little analogy. Glass cannon. Hey, look who's back. Let's try this again. That last game, that never even happened. Wow, in a very similar hand. Beautiful. Sweet. If I remember white, remember right, we get a bonus for white, black, and blue, aka Esper, and not, and uh, detriment for red and green, which makes sense. Fortunately, I don't see anything but red and green. What do you like, and or dislike? It's about the same, but a little better. that, we might be able to get another red there. I don't know. Green means go! It's bad when you can't even gain three mana a turn. Wow! Shouldn't have even said anything. Yeah! Yeah! Okay. We don't want that Kefnet out yet. Oh, um, wow. There is no good mana today. None. Brain means go? Sort of? Uh huh. 
Oh, thank heavens, that's what we were needing to see. That usually doesn't happen on your turn. Um, we're gonna keep slamming towards Glyph Keeper. Um, the white is good. We can get four or five white, or we can get five blue. Doesn't really matter. <clears throat> we're gonna move the most gems around. It's kind of the best way to figure out what to do sometimes. What's gonna move the most gems is gonna clear a whole line. Maybe we'll get these green. Maybe some other stuff will happen. Nope. Like that red waters, but I'd rather get this champions of wit, champion of wits out. And the champion of wits will ditch our glyph keeper, which will let us cheat it into play in a moment. Okay, now what? Black. Ooh, do we have two of those we can get rid of now? Great. Oh! And we have Kefnid on my Splendid. Let's see how many supports it starts with. Two! It's not bad. Excellent. So there we just pitched one of our, uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it loses a shield every turn? I guess that's fair. It's not that powerful in effect, but... River's Rebuke up there. Let's get the Daring Saboteur. Find another one of them. Now that he's online. Okay. No, no, no. Go for the black. Cool. Dump a couple more things in our graveyard. Good. Oh, that's fun to dump too. Oh no, we wanted that. We're gonna discard it. No. It's like, great, there's that card I needed. Gone. Never mind. I don't think Consign lets you bounce something to their hand if their hand is full. Looks like they're about to cast something anyway. Um. Let's do it again. Oh, and we get to cheat one of our embalmed griffins into play. Uh, I think it's better than this guy. He's obviously better than this guy. He kinda already did his thing. Hey, we get to keep it this time. <laughs> Uh-oh! That's a good spell. There's so much green. <laughs> no one likes green. It's, it's color. That, mm, yeah. I actually really like green. I turned a corner on it. For a long time, I didn't like green. In Paper Magic. Weird moaning noise. Like some mana. I guess. With all this mana I'm not getting. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, I can't return anything to his hand. Well, alright. It was interesting. Uh, it, it's real hard to gauge, you know, the deck's effectiveness at these low levels because you're so stifled on mana gains. Um, I'm going to keep building him. He looks really cool, but this is not the coolest thing I've done recently. Let's get Karn up and running. I, I believe there's a cool mechanic um, with Karn where if you lock him into a color node, he gets those color bonuses. So for example, if we lock, if we 
you lock Karn into this red-green node, we're, I'm not even caring about this stuff. I'm so tired of playing werewolves. I believe Karn will get um, a, red, a bonus to his red and green. Uh, that's how I understand it anyway. Um, we'll see if that works. This deck's actually pretty spicy. Um, it can do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, just not really cheating stuff into play, but like making his stuff cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to cast. And it's got some powerful cards in it too, which is advisable. All right, let's check out my mana gains. Nope, that definitely didn't do anything. Apparently I read that wrong. Okay. Um, we'll get the Ram Roller out, followed up with a Meteorite. But first, oh man, I need stability on turn one. That's sweet. <laughs> Let's see. I think we'll go hangar back. Now, our mana gains should have changed a little bit. See that? Everything changed a little bit. So we want black or blue. Or we could consider taking green. Um, I think for these early stages, let's just stay on target. to get both these, but I can do this. Red, too. Ooh, and all that stuff. Oh, I thought we had a free turn right here. Darn. Alright, let's do this again. Yup. Now you're probably wondering why I'm not running the Lotus in this. I don't know. It's, it's good, but... I, I mean, I guess it'd be really good with his kind of lackluster mana gains anyway, but the, the Pyramid of the Pantheon really works well in a deck where you're drawing lots of cards and you can keep getting more and more and more and more of these out. Um, so I like it a little better in this deck. Just a little. <laughs> Ooh, another free turn. Oh! Slamming away. Another free turn. Meteorite is such a good card. And if we're lucky, we can get Helm of the Gods online too. This is a bonkers good turn. Uh, we'll go here. Helm of the Gods, way better than its paper counterpart. Creature, he dies. There, there's a, there's a two-two also for ten with first strike that I think is just a little bit better. The first strike can like really hose your opponent. This guy just dies unless you put a little work into him. Uh, yeah, looks good. Now the thing is about his first ability. After you do it three times, you stop gaining bonuses. At which point. Maybe it's worth saving up. Yep, we'll take another one of those. It's worth saving up for um, his second ability, but just getting to pick your card draw every turn is really good. If we do this, we'll give him access to green. If we do that, we'll give him access to green. I don't really want to break all this, because then all my blue will be all in one spot. All right, go black. Boy, am I glad I did. Crunch. Huh, he didn't take his green mana. What a goofball. 
Okay, I'm gonna turn that off so it doesn't auto cast. Let's do this! Sure, I'll take another Helm of the Gods. We'll put it on. I don't know where I'll put it on. I might put it on the Hanger Back Walker. I might just keep powering up this dude. Um, we'll see. I might just hang on to it just in case, though it will win the game faster if I cast it. I'm just worried he's gonna kill this thing. Well, sit tight. Because if he kills it, um, I have the uh, Brawler's Plate, and that'll give that guy um, Berserker. So that's cool. Meanwhile, the uh... The Ram Roller, whatever this guy is called. Yeah, Ram Roller. Not to be confused with Juggernaut, aka Big Jugs. Effectively the same card. Um, I have one over there, that's why I was looking at my pile of cards. Um, Forget what I was saying. I'll just play the game. Let's play the game. Playing a game. So it's interesting, since Karn can be any color combination, you can build four color decks, five color decks. I almost made, joked and made him a, uh, I mean, you can make a, another black green planeswalker. And just totally forget about Raska. That's something you can do. I think his plus one ability when you get a little higher level, like maybe level two or something. If you fetch a color card, like a like a green card or something, it then gives you a bonus to that color of card. I think I think that's what it does. I'm gonna keep playing with them, um, obviously, because he's really cool and really unique, and it's really cool that they released him early. Good work, D3 Go and Octagon, and really like his. He's very similar. He's a very good adaptation of the card, the Paper Magic card. Um, and I, I feel like that is a very smart thing to do. And it's not easy. This guy's a very strange card. And I think you knocked it out of the park. And at 20 bucks, totally fine deal. There, yep, see? Somehow we lost our dude. We must have uh, gotten the Gideon's defeat there when I wasn't paying attention. As is often the case. Um, I'm gonna put the Helm of the Gods on the. <clears throat> oh no! Let's see what this does. <laughs> It's like if Karn and a Stormtrooper had a baby. Neat. So it's just an 8-8 prevent damage. Cool. I feel like I have very good luck with Cascades whenever I have Hanger Back Walker out. on the ice. What did we draw? Oh, we got we got a rain roller from Exile. Cool. Let's throw this out. Doesn't seem very useful right this moment. Uh, I mean, he's... He's dead. Just kill him. Bomb. Flat. Cool. Karn's cool. Alright, I want to play one more deck. Should we play the dragon? Very tempting. I wanted to build a silly. Oh, you know what? I I 
I can't. Uh, maybe I'll save the dragon for another episode. Um, I have to play a black or white node. Pardon me. And I had an idea for a silly um, Soren deck. So that is what we are going to do. Silly Soren deck. This is the last one in the roster. Oh, there he goes. I'm gonna make an event deck. And we're gonna get first thing I want is the white dinosaur from Oh, it's not rare. That's right. It's uncommon. It's uncommonly good. That's Seashorn. Belligerent Brontodon. This might not be bad, too. Does he only buff your dinosaurs? Interesting. We'll add him for now. But the other card I wanted is this silly black mythic from one of the Innistrad sets. Yeah! Tree of Perdition. When this creature takes damage, your opponent takes damage equal to the difference between this creature's maximum toughness and current toughness. <laughs> uh, I just thought of another card that we're going to put in. That sounds like fun. It's rare this time. It's from... Yeah, actually, I think it's from our Devastation. Rune Spider? Obelisk Spider. Similar. <laughs> Just withers creatures away. Alright, what does our deck look like? We've got four pretty good creatures. We can maybe ditch the Aegisaur. Maybe. Um, other things I want to include... I want the white spell that buffs all their butts. Butt buffer. I feel like there's another creature with like really high toughness and low attack. I know there's the Putrid Imp from Origins, but that thing just sucks. Um, yeah, whatever. We're we're well on our way to a good deck. Other fun stuff. I, I know there's a there's an enchantment from. Yeah, there's Putrid. Yeah. He's Putrid. This guy's sizable. I think this is what I was looking for. So basically, it regenerates your creatures and damages your opponent's stuff. Seems kind of fun. Something else I was thinking. Of. Oh, we need something. We, we're, we're gonna. Need some way to um, give our creatures prevent damage if they get themselves in a spot. It's a great card. Okay, what else? What else? What else? We don't have any removal. And one of my favorite pieces of removal is. Know the name of it. I've played it so many bajillion times. Not to the slaughter. But that's quite good too. It's a spell. There we go. Anguish I'm making. And it gets rid of his support. It's great. You take six damage, but in Soren's deck, you don't even notice it. All right. Um, we need some ramp. Merp, 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 merp. I am looking for... I can't remember which one of these it's in. I actually sort of know the name of this one. Steam Vent? No, that's not right. Shambling Vent. And last but not least... I sure wouldn't mind one more way. This kills creatures. These all kind of kill creatures in very dirtily ways. Let's just grab... Get, um, 
Desert of the Glorified. Gravy. This should be fun. This is a deck I've kind of had conceptualized for a really long time, but I've never bothered to put it together, and I saw this event was up today, and I'm like, let's do it. Today's the day. Hold on to your butts. Wait, no, this is a vampire. Uh, I don't need good vampire quotes. There's gotta be a good vampire quote. I can't think of one. This looks good. Awesome! Uh, I'm gonna wait. You never know. They might be able to crack off a kill spell turn one and then I've wasted two spells, so... We're gonna wait one turn to cast that. Alas, they did not. We're gonna get the Shambling Vents online. Alright. Take the black. Burp. And we're gonna swing for 14! Black green dino stuffs. Oh, I kept that guy in. I have a feeling this game might just be over soon. Cause yeah. Cause yeah. Yeah, I guess we get the Bellowing Age of Sword. Kills the opponent a lot faster than that dirtily enchantment. If I hit the green, the white will be down here, I guess. I don't think there's much else to do. Alright, alright. All right. Take it. Boy, a good play here. Okay. Rude. Oh, oh, that's what I want. We're gonna save Soren's mana gain ability until we get another creature out. And we're gonna go like this. Take a chunk out of their support. We'll try and do it again next turn. If we might crack the screen. My cards! Monster. Now, this will blow up uh, a support if they don't have a creature in play, so I'm just going to turn that off because we can actually get rid of this right now. Crunch. Hydrana. Fortunately, can't be blocked, so that's a bit of a bummer, but. We have a kill spell. That, no. I want to take up some of their black. I can't get rid of it all this turn. So let's do this. I don't usually mind casting that if I don't have a support to hit. But I can hit a creature. But just hitting a support, not a creature. Unless it's like really busted support like Hixus or something. I usually will just, you know, tough it out. So don't let this thing throw you. Even though it looks like it has wings, it does not have flying. It's a really good card, though. Especially in, yeah, discard times. Just make him discard everything. Burp. But I mean, they're dead this turn. Bam! Didn't really get to do the Tree of Perdition, but that deck actually worked really well. Um, that uh, Belligerent Brontodon is rad. It's, it's a really cool card. It can really do... I mean, you can just cheat. Cheat, you know, strong creatures in. You know, if it's got high toughness and... Whatever, if it's got high toughness, just get it in there and smash, 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 smash. Well, I think that's going to be close to everything for today. Uh, we got lots of cool new stuff. We got Squinty Jace, we got Karn, we got Dominaria cards. Uh, just, there's a lot going on in Puzzle Quest right now. Um, I'm kind of like running out of resources, as you can see. There's just too much for me to spend my stuff on. Uh... 
da, 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 da. yeah, almost two, 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 two. Oh, it's almost two five two zero. That's neat. Anyway, that's me. That has been a lot of fun. I hope you will tune in soon and uh, keep enjoying Puzzle Quest and go play some Dominaria. You won't be disappointed. Later.